Boo! This is Angela with Danceful Thoughts, and this is, I don't know, recording six or seven, trying to still get this lesson all ready for you. This is my Skeleton Dance Challenge lesson. It's a great idea for October. It was inspired by a silly purchase that I made at a discount store. We have them, we call them Ross, Dress for Less. I came uh, in there and I was shopping just for, for holiday stuff, and I found this placemat. It is a nice thick placement. It comes in a set of four. It was only five dollars. So I'm one of those people that loves those those craft videos where somebody goes into Dollar Tree and they get something and make something else. Well, I did the same thing, but I'm doing it for crazy lesson plans for you. So this is one of the ideas that I have. I have always I'm bring my friend on camera. I have always had fun with skeletons. I use them a lot in teaching uh, muscles and bones and teaching the ballet to the bone unit. So I think that uh, it's great that skeletons have truly been embraced in the uh, holiday decor. You know, I give those designers a thumbs up. I know all the cheese ready for you this morning. But I wanted to show you this lesson. I started a live uh, Sunday night for this and the Wi-Fi just tapped out on me. So I'm giving you a recorded version of this. I'm recording early in the morning so I've got beautiful lighting effects that's not supposed to be spooky but I will try to keep going fast and get this done before my doggies decide to bark. So no, with no more talking I'm going to talk about this silly lesson plan. So what you see here, it's got four different lines. They have different skeleton poses on there. And I created some activities on different levels. I think these activities could be fun for dance class, but I think they would be great for your more advanced kids. You've got some applications here that would be great for your kids who have to do uh, choreography, cleaning and polishing, learning to analyze simple shapes without looking at a human body but just the bones and figuring out shaping and details. And then I've got some fun, fun activities where they're just going to have fun and laugh. So you could use this. If you didn't want to use it in your classroom setting, you could easily use this for a party game. You pick it apart, find the parts that work for you. I'd even love to see this turned into a social media dance challenge. So you could pick some of the activities. So my friends who have a... Uh, many weeks that they need to fill on their calendar. You could use several of these activities a couple of days each. This is October where our dance, um, dance education friends in the public school setting are often bothered by, I hate to use that word, but it's true. It's, it, it disrupts your plans because there's standardized testing going on. Kids are coming in and out of your class. So these are all activities that kids could pick up and, and learn in the instant, whether they were in the group for the first part or not. So let's get started. So if you go to Teachers Pay Teachers and you find Danceable Thoughts, this is a brand new download, not very expensive at all. And it comes with several pages. The first page is the teacher page where I explain to you what my thoughts are and that kind of stuff. I wouldn't hand this to the students. This is your teacher page. The first page that you would lead the students through is a fill in the blank page, simplified version of analysis. You're going to go in and have them look and, and count shapes and look for pattern recognition and start analyzing the shapes. And then I gave some simple terminology for them to use. You know, you're going to camouflage their learning in a fun activity. So I'm going to apologize to my purists out there. I went with very simple definitions of asymmetrical and symmetrical. So for symmetrical, in my mind, we're going down the center axis, fold it in half like a paper doll and see if the arms and legs match. You could even get into more detail because some of these poses are symmetrical completely, but some are symmetrical on the bottom and asymmetrical on the top. So you've really got a lot of show things to show the kids to help them see this and then they can get up and actually physically do the poses so we do asymmetrical and symmetrical again we talk about because this whole line number three has floating heads in it I use terminology that goes way back in my dance training about the seven positions of the head but because I know that vocabulary is sometimes um giggle inspiring instead of using the word erect for a straight line because we might have some boys in class who giggle and that's not really what we want them to do we're just going to use the word upright so i apologize to my purists but we're going to do upright tilted and uh, tilted or inclined and then turned hey is this my good side or is that my good side they even go so far if you want to go into the analysis of focus being up eyes raised or eyes lowered so it's really right there floating heads you got them all so you can do that and then you can talk about turned out 
inverted or parallel for the foot position. So page one is simple activity analysis. Look at these and, and, and figure out the shapes that, that are interesting to the kids. They're going to actually physically try to do them independent of putting together in a phrase. And they're going to realize that some of the shapes are off the floor, elevated. Some of them are off center, off axis. They're tilted. Look at this guy. I love what they're doing. And she's got a great attitude right there. So you're going to be able to take this activity and do it on a very simple level. Page two, if you choose to do it, gets a little more in detail, a, a little more detailed analysis looking at them. I came up with 13. That's a spooky number for Halloween or 31 if you get your numbers backwards. But 13 legit ways to say, so you're finding symmetrical poses, uh, standing on one foot, where's the, the spine curved. So they're starting to analyze these. I love, and I talked about this um, before that for your friends who are in charge of cleaning and polishing, when you look at this particular skeleton, you can even tell, and on almost, almost all of them, you can tell where their thumb is. So it's not just V arms up any direction, but the thumb is down. I went off camera a little bit for you. So you can really help your kids who are in charge of details start really figuring out where is the head, where are the shoulders, how, how much of an angle, go into geometry, how much of an angle is that elbow or that knee hinged at? So you can do it, like I said, very much on a, on a, a top level or the kids can get very detailed. Finally, I like the idea that um, you can look through this and maybe let the kids use their dance terminology. There's definitely some demi plies, some lunges, some coupe positions. So first step is let's see if we can use our dance terminology. And then the last one that's funny and they're going to laugh and I added school appropriate can have the kids go through and create the shapes and give the shapes names because you know somebody had to make up all those dance terms back in the day so they can do that so that's at level uh, level two activities these are the movement activities and you could pick one all of them you could start with one and over the couple of the weeks you could do several of them great ideas for like I said just to pull them out for a party game you can pull this out so the first one is cheesy yep just the bones where they have to do the poses down the line in order. You can see there's a repeat, one, two, three, repeat, one, two, three, repeat, one, two, does it finish, three. But doing that with nothing more than maybe demi plies in between because they might have to jump definitely in line one. So giving them that opportunity to do just the bones. Then we take it to the next step. We flesh it out. We put something in between. This is my modern dance training coming in. I love this specifically for uh, lines two and three three or sorry three and four so you take a body part maybe you pick this elbow and you've got to swing 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 and that elbow leads you into the next shape or this attitude looks to me like an attitude leg it could swing 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 into place so they could do swing they could do rebound they could do twisting they could twist 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 turn and get to the shape so you're using and it's listed for you things like turning twisting that kind of thing to get you to those different shapes and make sure I have the right page as I'm speaking to you guys. So I want you to think about those movement activities. Those are super fun. And then the next thing that you'll do from flesh it out, from flesh it out is bring them to life. And that's where you have an actual set of dance movements that I want you to, I've got three different categories and these would be transitions in between. And I was very purposeful. I used dance terminology and I put <clears throat> pardon my cough, in each category, a turning movement, a footwork movement, and a traveling movement. They only have to pick one, but once they pick one from each category, then your more advanced kids can use different ones, but it gives them a little bit of structure to put on their bones, building it up. I know it's really cheesy, but it's super fun. So this is the most dancey, literally says use your dance magic, this, this, this third activity of bringing them to life uses dance the most. Love to see you pot of array from shape to shape, that kind of thing. The floating heads activity is so silly, but it's a fun one. Again, I think this would be a great party game. So you have, you assign dancers to be the actual poses, like they'd hit the pose and change it back and hit the pose and change it back. And this, so each dancer that's one of the assigned poses does the same thing the whole time. But everybody else has to, okay, when you're over here, you have to have your head tilted this way. Your head tilted, you got to head, get, your head's got to get low, get low, go up there, go around. So I think this would be super fun for you to set up, let's say, 
uh, skeleton sculptures, and the the rest of the class has to use the head angles to dance their way through, over, under, around, beside. Would be silly, put on some great music, let it go in the background. Uh, speaking of music, there's not any prescribed music for this, but I think Shake It Off would be hilarious. You could use Toccata and Fugue. You could shake, rattle, and roll. I know that's not a bone song, but it could be your bones. If you're old like me, you do shake, rattle, and roll every time you wake up or stand up for that matter. So I want you to look at this one as just a fun activity. This isn't great moments in choreography, but it is great moments in dance class because it would be super fun. The last activity is the uh, is the ele lively eleven, where they go through and they analyze all eleven shapes, pick up pick out each of them, and then they get to put them together in any order that they want with any kinds of transitions that you want them to do. So it's a super fun way for them to interact with and an, a body analysis, shape analysis the things about symmetrical, asymmetrical, facings, you can add a, a conversation about levels, and you're teaching them choreography elements, and they think they're doing a funny skeleton dance. This is what I love about creative lessons that I know that you're already doing in your class, and I want to add to the fun and give you that. Also, I wanted to remind you that if you cannot find my great placemat my great find you could do this yourself you could create these poses you could go in and find your own sets of skeletons i'm a big fan of canva i use it a lot just want to let you know that there's some crazy looking skeletons in canva so i would not allow the students to bring in these canva or these skeleton shapes. I think you want to be very purposeful in the way you design uh, shapes that demonstrate all of these different topics, the heads in, heads in the different directions, the turnout and the parallel, the uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical, even the details about the thumbs. So as you design, if you decide to design your own lines of skeletons, make sure you're very uh, aware of the content that you're trying to sneak in there and teach them. So I'm so thankful for all of you reminding you can uh, go to www.danceablethoughts.com. That's the website. It's free to subscribe. This lesson is not up there yet, but I hope that uh, you will find other uh, resources that guide you and help you and your students think it through and dance it out. That is what we love about the Danceable Thoughts approach to dance curriculum. Have a great day.